Hi guys and welcome to the lecture series on the course of applied transport modeling with Vizum. Uh, today we'll have lecture 9 that will be the on the topic of mode choice. My name is Mohit Qureshi and uh, the idea of uh, today's lecture is basically trying to uh, create mode based OD matrices um, for, for, for different types of modes. Yeah? So uh, looking at the schedule, uh, last week we covered this type of tip, distribu tip distribution. So basically these are part of the four step transport demand modeling. Uh, first, we had the trip generation, which was basically outputting the productions and attractions for each zones. And the next idea, next next step was basically trip distribution, where we converted the production and attractions into an OD matrix, which was like zone to zone from each zone to all the zones trips that will be produced in the network. And today we'll uh, we will uh, cover the topic on mode choice. Will be basic, which will be basically. Uh, creating uh, the OD matrices based uh, for different modes. Yeah. So now we have uh, so from the output of distribution, we have only one OD matrix that gives you all the trips from each zone to all the other zones. Now, how will they travel? All these trips, how will they travel using different modes? Will be covered in this step where we will basically uh, create uh, as an output OD matrices for for people who travel by car, for bike, for public transport. Yeah. And uh, the lecture contents for today include three different parts. The first one is basically to estimate the impedance matrices in Wisdom. Uh, if you remember from last week, uh, we also used uh, an, an, an impedance uh, function to find the distance or the impedance between all the zones. Yeah, This was required uh, for, for the gravity model in trip distribution. The idea is that, okay, we try to find what is the resistance between all the zones to travel for people. Yeah. So what we, what we did last week was like we, we tried to create a distance matrix between all the zones and then try to use it for our gravity model. So in this uh, mode choice, you can see in this step, what we have is basically that uh, we try to find impedance matrices for different modes. Yeah. So what we try to do is like, okay, we have uh, travel time, so we can create uh, scheme matrices for travel times from zone to zone using private transport, that is car and bike or public transport. Yeah? And also we can have a cost function where we're using a cost function, we can have a travel cost from all zones to all zones, a, a matrix of travel cost for private transport and public transport. Now, this is also like the resistance or the impedance for people to travel from one zone to the other. Yeah? And using these basically what we'll do in the next step is that we will try to understand that how people are actually traveling and how they perceive the attributes of costs and travel times and other mode attributes, how they perceive them while they are traveling. Yeah. So we have, uh, if you understand, uh, like from the various lectures, basically we have a trip survey, right? So trip survey is basically covering all the trips and which modes they are using. And as we will, all, we, if we have the impedance for uh, all the modes, uh, on the network from uh, to travel from one zone to the other and we have uh, the actual trips that have the attributes that okay people move from this zone to this zone using this mode yeah using this data basically and using the maximum likelihood estimation we will try to understand what is the preference or the preference coefficients for people in choosing a mode yeah and basically this will create utility functions for all the modes what is the utility of choosing a mode for each person and then we will go to the next step which is actually modeling the mode choice in vision and to do that we'll create a position sequence for mode choice and we will input uh, the estimated utility functions for each mode yeah uh, so that, that's the overall idea for today's lecture. So first, let's see what we have covered last week. Last week we were uh, we worked on we we basically covered uh, the topic of trip distribution, and the basic steps of uh, doing the trip distribution included first of all again uh, estimating an impedance matrix. Uh, for uh, for from all zones to all zones. So an impedance matrix that is similar to the size of an OD matrix to show the impedance which we chose like 
car by distance in our in our case that what is the car by distance from each zone to all other zones yeah and this we can consider as the impedance or resistance and then once we had that distance what we did well, we what we did was we tried to estimate the gravity model parameters and to estimate gravity model parameter we also needed an observed data right so we have a network data that is the impedance matrix or the distance from each zone to each zone yeah but actually how people are traveling we created an observed tlfd that is trip length frequency distribution and the idea was here that we created a distribution of the trip lengths for the people yeah so it had if you remember it was like a histogram which had like five to six intervals from zero to 1.2 kilometer 1.2 to 1.4 kilometer yeah? and the number of people uh that uh, they they are they are traveling within each interval right so this gave us the basic idea of how much how longer shorter or what is the distribution of people's trip length and once this this was one input the other input was input was like the impedance matrix of the network and using this we basically estimated the gravity model parameter in which zone and once we had the estimation of gravity model parameter we used this gravity model to basically uh, do the trip, trip distribution procedure sequence yeah and once we had the trip distribution procedure sequence we again using the the ot matrix uh, we we found uh, we 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 checked what is the model TLFD. So the model TLFD was also like what was the trip length, the distribution of trip lengths in the model, and then we basically compared both the observed TLFD and the model TLFD to understand what was the coincidence ratio. The coincidence ratio was basically the idea that how much accurately we were able to estimate the gravity model parameters using the observed TLFD. Yeah because the estimation is an iterative process so there will always be some error that is left and it was pretty much good around 93 or 95 percent the constitution that we received yeah so this was the idea and today we also we are also starting with impedance matrices for each mode but the idea again is different there we, we use the impedance as uh, in the gravity function for the distance between the zones and today we will work on mode based impedance matrices so starting with the impedance matrix uh, the idea of impedance matrix is univism we will basically creating a number of impedance matrices so first for travel time we will create travel time by car travel time by bike and travel time by public transport we are right now considering only three types of motorways <coughs> modes actually uh, then uh, the other three types we will create the other three matrices that we will create will be basically um, uh, formula functions of travel cost or cost functions yeah so cost functions for example the travel cost by car will be considered as 1.5 to the travel distance of car car travel cost by public transport will be considered a basic uh, basic ticket fee you can say 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 into ride distance by PUT and the third one travel cost by bike we assume as zero yeah so basically these cost functions will vary based on your network and everything and these cost functions we are taking as synthetic so that we can we can give a complete we can have a complete example of our more chest more choice step yeah but the idea of uh, cost functions are actually based on what is what are the actual cost attributes for using all the modes mm -hmm. um so basically uh first what i'll do is like i will cover how you can create the skim matrices for travel time and travel costs in Visum. And I'll go, I'll show you first of all all of these steps in, in, in the lecture, and then I will go to the Visum um, GUI and we will do all the steps as well on hands on. Yeah. So the basic idea is that we will we will create different procedure sequences to extract these distance and travel time skim matrices, which we will basically use later to do the maximum likelihood in R um so first of all to start with what we'll do is like we will go to the position sequence uh um option in visum and then we will create a new procedure sequence and under matrices we will basically select create prt scheme matrix and press ok and this will basically create a new record for calculate prd scheme matrix and then we need to find a reference so we need to choose a reference object okay which mode you want uh, out of the private transport so in private transport we have a bike and car two modes so we will choose first car and uh, then like just you can simply double click on reference object and choose car 
and then once you choose it then you have to choose a few options so which types of uh, of impedances you want to calculate so under variant or file variant dash file you can double click and here if you remember this is the idea of of of, of choosing the impedance attributes you want to you want to select right so first of all the idea is like the minimum or the shortest path search criteria what do you want to have and if you remember we have previously also selected the free flow Trip, uh, travel time so the min the this means that uh, the the maximum or the free flow travel times from moving from one one point to the other so we choose the path criteria as free flow travel time and then we choose two options that is what is the trip distance between all the zones and the second thing what is the free flow travel time or the travel time between the distance yeah so right now we are these these are basic assumptions that we are having that uh, to to show you the complete set of uh, complete step of mode choice but um, you can have different so i won't i won't be always considering free flow travel time as uh, the impedance for 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 the mode but basically the idea should be that you should have the actual peak hour off peak hour based on the network demand or network congestion the actual travel times yeah so because that is the real impedance but here we are we are just doing um, uh, an example of mode choice and here we are trying to find the simple impedance matrix of uh, free flow travel time and if you want to get the actual travel time so if you see t current that is you can choose this option that will give you the actual or the current uh, interval based or the demand based travel time yeah so we choose these two uh, trip distance and travel time for car we choose these two options and we press ok so if you see i have also written here that ok you can choose different impedance elements and then we have to choose the path search criteria um, next once you have this for car you can create using the same steps so create a new prdsk matrix you can choose a reference object bike and do the same things so in the variant file choose the free flow travel time and trip distance and now basically you will have two procedure sequences that will for us evaluate two uh, scheme matrices for each mode car and bike that will be the free flow travel time and the ride distance so next we will basically create the procedure sequence that will calculate the impedance for public transport and to do that you will basically have a new procedure sequence create and then under matrices you can use calculate public transport scheme matrices and now in here you will choose the reference object and there you will only see one that is the public transport yeah so we'll choose the public transport mode and a tricky part next is that we have to first choose uh, here um, what is the um, impedance based on so we will choose the option of tab timetable based impedance so you want timetable based to do this to choose this you can click on this drop down and you have two or three options and you can choose timetable based impedance and then you have to double click on 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 this field of timetable and you will see this um, new window options uh, and here you have to choose under uh, under this uh, left side you can choose scheme matrices and then here you will have to choose two types of impedance elements so the first one would be the travel time or the journey time and the second one will be the travel distance or the ride distance yeah so similar to the prt or the private transport we will uh, there we ha we had travel time and in dist and 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 distance here we will have journey time that is basically the in vehicle time and waiting time and for public transport and the ride distance and once we are able to choose this we will basically uh, select all three uh, under the active command and we will press execute to execute all of these three um, procedure sequences that will that will create scheme matrices so yeah so let's uh, try and do this first in wisdom and then we can go further yeah and let me just quickly open up my wisdom file that we left for for the till the step of trip distribution so here we had the last step that we did so this was our model file and the last step that we did was basically uh tail trip distribution that for us gave as an output of uh, distribution home based work all from all zones to all zones yeah so this is an od matrix that is for 24 zones and each zone to each zone there are number of trips 
and now the next step that we want to cover is basically uh, starting uh, to first of all calculate the scale matrix and to do this I'm just going to show you again the idea so first of all in the position sequence you will press on this create button and this will show you this dialog and under this you have to go on matrices private PRT scale matrix press ok yeah so we can create once twice uh, so we can create uh, this PRT scale matrix again so once more so that because we have two different uh, private transport modes and we can just uh, set them all, set them both together so first of all for the first one we'll choose the reference object as bike for the next one we can choose the reference object as car and then in there's a variant you can double click on this field and you will have this dialog basically where we can choose the path search criteria and the impedance elements so under the path search criteria you can simply choose the travel time free flow travel time and then here you can choose what are the two impedance elements you want so first one is free flow travel time and the next one is trip distance yeah and you can simply press ok similarly for car we will do the same thing yeah so trip distance and free flow travel time and press ok next what we want to do is like we want you to create scheme matrix for the public transport and to do that we again go to create matrices Calculate public transport scheme matrix, press OK. And here the reference object will have only one mode that is the PUT itself. And we'll just click OK. And here I was telling you that we had we have a few options. So we can have headway based, timetable based, or another option. So this is basically how you want to find the impedance. So timetable based means that uh, given the timetable uh, what so you will have waiting times plus the the travel times right so, so the, the 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 idea of having the journey time will be based on uh, what type of um, what type of calculation for the waiting times you want to choose that in my understanding yeah so we we are choosing table timetable base that is that okay we have a given timetable for 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 all the bus lines and we will have basically uh, when uh, what will be the general waiting time for the people to travel from the ones or to the other and plus also you have transfers and everything right so there will be like transfer times will be also the waiting time that is included in the journey time so basically you will choose the um, the um, the variant under variant which type of um, impedance calculation you want to have and then under timetable based you can simply double click on this field and you will have this dialog where you can see a number of options and we what we want to do is like we want to find the we want to evaluate the scheme matrices for uh, impedance of public transport and you choose scheme matrices and under here we can choose um which impedance you want so the first one we wanted was like journey time you have a lot of a number of options but if you remember we had the journey time and the second option you wanted was the right distance and we can find that probably um yeah here so 39 so right distance and journey line so we can simply press select these two and press ok and now we have these three uh, procedure sequences we are basic which are basically uh, for us uh, evaluating the scheme matrices for impedances for all three different modes and one, so the, the now we want to, to execute and to do that to execute we have to have this selection this uh, active selection carefully yeah and then we can simply press uh, here the you can say the play button I don't know but the, the execution button and we press ok and and they press this and you will have the messages that all of these are executed and now the output of the scheme matrices are stored under matrices scheme matrices zone data, uh, data matrices and here are all the uh, different scheme matrices that you want so they are total number of seven no six so six matrices yeah exactly so yeah that's it so till here we have basically understood how we can create the different uh, impedance elements matrices for all the modes and now let's go back to our um, lecture yep <clears throat> So now in our next step what we want to do is like we want to um, reset a few values so uh, the basically the diagonal values for the scheme matrices because 
we cannot for a zone there is no attributes within zone right so for example the travel time is zero for the travel between zone one to zone one or zone two to zone two and this can actually create some problems for for us so what we try to do is like we we try to address appropriate values on the diagonals and to do that what you do so first of all you can simply double click on any of uh, the matrix to show what its values or show the matrix itself and then so what we can do is like right now we are working with the travel time by car and we can simply double click and then uh, we can click on this diagonal set diagonal option so when you click on this you will see this dialog and here you can set different uh, values as uh, with different operations actually and a simple idea is like you want to set a constant you can click and you can set a constant and what we are actually trying to do here is that we will first of all set a constant which will have a very high value yeah so we select the diagonal set diagonal and we set constant and we'll put 9999 as a very large value and simply press ok so then once we have this so you'll see that all the diagonal values are given 9999 and then what we will actually do is like we will set again the the diagonal so we'll press again on this set diagonal and now we will choose an op option of um, of uh, value based on or relative to uh, origin destination attribute so we will select this option and then we will press here to select the attribute and once you press here you can find uh, an operation that is like minimum matrix row minimum right and to find it you can simply write minimum and you will see these um, search options and under here you can select matrix row minimum and we will choose the same matrix the t naught or t0 car yeah so once you select this so the idea here is that it will find the minimum of all of each row and the minimum of each row is basically set on that diagonal value yeah so that is the idea so first of all what you did is like because it was zero and if we do the same operation straight away what will happen is that the value will be set again to zero because zero is the minimum for that row but what we did is like we first converted all the diagonal values to a very large number and then what we did is like we set the diagonal again giving it uh, an operation that is based on the matrix itself choosing that we we want to set the value for the minimum of that row yeah and this is the simple idea how you can do it and once we press ok we will see that the values are set as the minimum of that row so if you see that the minimum of this row is like 1.74 and that's what is set in here and similarly we want to do this so we did this for travel time by car and we want to also want to do this for the distance by car and the travel time by bike as like this yeah so now we have uh, um, just a moment so now we have uh, all the so the basically three of them so the travel time by car travel time by bike and distance by car uh, set as uh, as the operation that i just showed is the minimum of the row and next we also want to put some values in the rest ones that is the journey trip a journey time for PUT and the ride distance by PUT. So to do this, we will start with the journey time by journey distance by PUT. And here uh, we actually cannot put the minimum value because you will see that there are a number of there are a number of zeros in here because this zero actually means that there is no public transport option available to go from one zone to the other so this is this is the basic idea and, and the public transport is relatively limited in the area and and there are a number of uh, od pairs which don't have uh, the uh, the public transport option available and the, the attribute is set to zero so for what we'll do is like we will simply put uh, a simple uh, constant of 0 0.5 here so basically i'm just showing you the idea of how you can do the diagonals but of course this is more or less an expert opinion as well that what you want to do by yourself yeah uh, one error that we have here is that that we have uh, let me just set it again so yes so again so we click on instead of this max we actually click on the set diagonal and we basically put a constant value of 0 0.5 this is as i told you the value is because we cannot use the operation of minimum um, row value.
So now we will put uh, so the, we put a constant of 0 0.5 for the right distance in PUT and also we will do the rest. So we have covered the distance, we have covered the travel time, travel time you can do the distance as well and for right distance by PUT is the only different operation because we have a lot of zeros and to do to remove that we can actually put a constant by ourselves. So yeah, just like this, and this shows you the, the, the output of once we set the diagonal as 0 0.5. And what we'll do next is basically uh, we will create the cost uh, matrices. So till here, we were basically had all the impedance matrices. And now, if you remember, we had three cost functions for bike, public transport, and car. And now what we want to do, do is like we want to create based on the distance and travel times, uh, for the three, three different modes, the cost of using these modes between each OD pair for each OD pair, yeah. And to do that, the idea is that you can create a new matrix clicking on this option. So once you click on this option, this is to create. This means uh, this option is basically to create matrices. So you click on this, and then you can set the name of of the of the matrix. So here we say the cost car. And the, uh, another option that you have to choose after setting the name is choose it as the formula matrix. So you select on formula matrix and you also have to specify what is the formula. So you click on edit formula and here you have to write basically the cost function. And if you remember the cost function for using the car was basically 1.5 into the, the distance. Uh, driven by a car and what you do is like we simply write 1.5 into and to put the matrix we select on this option and we choose the distance car matrix and once we choose the distance by car matrix and you press ok and you will have the cost um, function set and you can simply press ok and ok and once you press uh, once you finish uh, for putting the cost function and press OK, you will actually have the cost matrix already evaluated. So once you do this, you will you will basically see a new form new matrix that will be under formula matrices named as cost car what we named, and the matrix that is simply like 1.5 of the distance matrix. And similarly, we will also do the same thing for cost bike. And to do that again, we will create a new matrix. And we will put the name as cost bike. You will choose the formula, the, the option of formula matrix, and put edit formula. And here we have zero into the distance bike. And if you remember, we said that the cost for using bike is actually zero. So we choose zero into the matrix, and then you press simply OK. So this will basically create the cost bike um, matrix. And you'll see that all the values for the cost are zero. That's because we set that zero into, so all the values should become zero. And the last one that we want is uh, the cost by public transport. And same idea again. We will put, we will select this option, and we will set the name of our single matrix as cost PUT. And we'll choose the formula. We'll say edit, and we'll write 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 into the matrix now here the matrix is not the journey time but the right distance now these are cost functions right so we assumed these as the cost functions for our mode choice but this should be based on what is the actual scenario that you have when you're 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 working as a modeler what are the actual mode attributes that you have in your area right so we consider here the 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 simple uh, for cost formula of public transport as 0 0.5 as the basic fare plus 0 0.8 into the right distance that or the number of stops or whatever you want or you you can say the idea is like based on the right distance yeah so when you press so when you put the cost formula and you press ok you will have the last uh, cost matrix of um, cost uh, for using the PUT for all zones to all zones, yeah? I hope you are getting much more aligned with Visu right now. Uh, and I'm going a bit relatively a bit faster, but because I understand, I feel that you understand the idea of all these scheme matrices now based on our previous lecture as well. So once we are finished with these uh, these impedance matrices, the next step is basically to export them and use them in R. Yeah. So we have the the distance and travel time attributes for all the modes, and now also the cost for all the modes. And what we will do is like to export this. If you remember, we have a simple um, method that is that we put this, all of these, in 
OD pair table. Yeah. So to do that, we click on right click on OD pair and we go to list and then we simply choose this select attribute button. And here we have to find matrices, all the matrices, and we have to set them or add them in the table. And once they are added, you can use this export button to export them in Access database. Don't worry, I'm going faster, but I'll show you hands-on as well. Yeah. So, so, so you, but you have seen this already. So we can simply click and export this to Access, and then import that into uh, an Excel file and save that Excel file to be loaded in R. Yeah. So now, till here, I'm going to show you the hands-on of how you can simply do these steps. And to start with, so where we have to go is uh, probably, yeah, the vision point. Yeah. So once we have executed these PRTs, then I, so we have all the uh, the skim matrices for car, bike, and PUTs. And we, first of all, we, if you remember, we have to do the uh, set diagonal operation. And to do that, we will simply double-click on so starting with the, the distance car matrix, we will uh, click on this set diagonal option. And here we'll see this dialog where we will start with putting a very large constant. 9999. Nine, 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 nine. Okay, I like, I don't know. But yeah, we put a very large constant. And next, we will again click on set diagonal. But now we'll choose an option to do an operation based on. Uh, so we will choose um, the set diagonal based on the OD attribute or, or the, the, the matrix attribute. And we will choose this to find which attribute you want. And you want to use the minimum of the row. So we, we select, we, we try to search minimum and here we go to matrix, row minimum. And what is this matrix? So this is the distance by car. So we select trip distance car and we press OK and OK. You see, so now we have all the diagonals as the minimum of the row. Similarly, so next is travel time by bike. I'm gonna quickly do this now because we have lesser time. So we set a large diagonal and then we go here, we go here and we basically choose again minimum. And here we will have the matrix minimum for travel time bike. That's it, yeah. So then is distance bike. So we can go distance bike. So I'm gonna quickly do this. Putting up first of all the constant, then the minimum. So this is distance trip uh, to distance bike. Yeah. So last one is travel time car. We start with the constant. Put the attribute. So I'm doing it very fast because it's just the same operation. But you have to be careful which matrix it is so choose the right matrix from there and here so that the uh, the diagonals are set correctly so but you can always check it right so these values this is the minimum 1.747 is the minimum so if you choose a wrong operation you will see values that are inconsistent and next is the journey time so here i'm gonna put some trj so some journey time right so then when I'm, I'm i'm gonna do the same operation here as well setting the diagonal as the minimum journey time that is there with, for the row. And yes, okay. And this way, keyword, okay, 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 yeah. Last one, if you remember the ride distance, we had some issue that we, there were a number of zero in the in the, in the journey ride. So the ride distance actually is not calculated because there is no direct right distance between one zone to the other, but there will be indirect right distances, yeah? So, and to do this, so what, the, what we'll do actually is like, we'll simply uh, choose a constant that is 0 0.5 and we press OK, yeah? So that's it. So that's the basic idea how we can set the diagonals. And the next step we want to do is to find the cost scheme matrices. And for that, we have to create a new matrix and set it, set it as a formula matrix. To start with, first of all, if, uh, so first of all, let's start with the car one. So we press this and we go cost car. Cost car. And we have to use it as, uh, so just a moment. So let me see. So we set the name, so we set the name as cost car. And then, okay, the matrix type is a skim matrix. And, um, 
it's a formula matrix yeah and if you remember what is the cost function for cars so to set that we click on this edit formula and here we set the function if i remember is like 0 0.5 into the distance by car now this is uh let me just quickly show you where is it so this is basically what we said here in the start an assumption so these are the assumptions so this is one assumption that we had like what are the cost formulas for these different modes so we said 1.5 not 0 0.5 so i'm gonna go back and i'm changing it to 1.5 yeah so 1.5 into this matrix is basically the distance by car and we press ok and we press ok and you will see a cost car which is basically the multi 1.5 of the distance car matrix uh, the next one is I mean it's not very useful to even create it because it's all zero but we still want to create it to show that okay this is the idea of creating the cost matrices so we, we say zero into the distance by bike we press okay the last one is um, cost put okay edit formula and here we said 0 0.5 into 0 0.8 oh, okay no that's a plus 0 0.8 into uh, the right distance the right distance by public transport and you press okay and you press okay and yeah there we go so we have the three costs for choosing the three modes as well now yeah and that's it so we have all the impedance matrices we required and now the next step is that we go to so this was the first part of our lecture and the next part is basically we go to r and we basically try to uh, do the step of maximum likelihood so and to export all of this data to r we need to export it into an excel file and read it again and if you remember how we can do it like we will go to network OD pairs, right click, list OD pairs. Now this lists us the OD pair table. So each OD pair and its different um, data, yeah, or, or metadata you can call it, yeah. So this first one that we, what we can see right now is actually for the, the, the results of the trip distribution. Oh no, sorry, the, the car distance, not the trip distribution, but the car distance. And we can add other attributes in the table using this, select attributes. And this will show us this dialog and you already have this table so what we'll do i'll just remove it and what we want to add is all the skim matrices and to do that you can search matrices simply so once you search matrix you will see that under matrix value we have all the matrices including the trip distribution we don't want trip distribution now what are the few things that we want this is something that is important to understand yeah so this is what we will be using so we need to know what we want to use in the maximum likelihood so the basic three ones are i would i would not okay sorry and uh, the basic thing are basic three are cost that are always there the other three will be the uh, travel time by bike car and the journey time so we'll select this 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 and the cost so the travel times and the costs and we so the distances we actually use just to find the cost and what we are actually using for the mode choice are the travel time and the cost that is required to 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 do the travel by using the mode and we select this and we press ok so we will have all the values here now you have to be very careful what is the different names for all of these because you might get confused and 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 a bit law a bit in there might be some inconsistency uh what what are the so you can see the names cost car cost bike and cost beauty so first of all set them as cost so we can use one type of structure so first is bike car and then beauty similarly here as well so the travel time zero should be for bike then car and then public transport so that we are more consistent yeah and we can actually so put the name instead of tt0 we can put the names and to do that we can go back to matrices and here we can we can select this and in the code we can say tt bike instead yeah which makes more sense and similarly here as well we can say tt car so that now when you will go there you will actually see these names in the so we actually see these names here in the table as well so tt bike tt car and grd 
yeah jrt is of course the journey time for public transport now this is the table that we want to export in excel and then import back in r and to export again if you remember you have the access uh, the export the export option export as database ms access 2.3 or uh, 2003 or earlier so you select this option you press ok and then we have to select okay where you want to save it so you choose the folder wherever you want to save it and then you press oh, click on this and then save and because i already had this from the from the previous uh, when i was creating the lecture and so i'm just gonna replace the existing database i'm simply gonna select this and then replace it you press okay now what we will do is like we will try and open an excel new excel file so this is what i was doing it before when i was preparing it so now i'm gonna open a new excel file go to data get data from database and from uh, ms access database and once you select this option you can navigate to your folder so i'm just gonna quickly copy my address where i had the id and then we can uh, we can simply choose the database you want to load you select this and you press import and your database is loading and here you have a few options so you you want the old pair uh, table so you select that and this is your table and you simply select and load and I'm sorry, but you get you have to rename these again. This is I know this is a bit stupid, but yeah, the 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 actual name is is the matrix value three, matrix value five, which we had as the matrix names there. So what I would do is I mean you can choose this option again here as well probably. So I select this. So this is number probably it's just saving the number. I'm not sure, but probably maybe you can say the number or something, and and these numbering is the same as what we have there. So what I would do is like I would rename them again. So this one, if we remember, was TT bike, and this was what TT car. So travel time car, travel time PUT, and then these were um, cost bike, cost car, and cost. PUT. So these are the attributes, the OD pair, OT pair based. So one to one, one to two, this is an OD pair. OD pair based attributes for all the for the all the modes, travel time and cost. So two attributes. Now we can simply save this and go to okay. We have to select the so I can simply select this. This is where I had. Uh, okay. So impedance matrix. I'm gonna say impedance matrix one because I'm not sure what is impedance matrix. But you can simply save it by a given name, and we have to use that name, the same name in our in, in the R file as well. So I saved this, and I can simply close, and that's it. So that is the idea of how. So let's go back to the lecture. So that is the idea how you can basically create the cost functions, and now the all of these key matrices, how you can put them into one OD pair table and export it into the Excel file. Now, this is the simple idea how we can extract the impress matrices from the Wisdom model. And next, the step that you remember, the next step was basically maximum likelihood in R. Yeah, so how we can perform the 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 discrete choice modeling. We call it the the area of this the, the field of this area is basically discrete choice modeling. So discrete choice means one choice. So we have to choose one mode out of this. So there is a complete uh, six credit course on discrete choice modeling from our chair as well, which is just emphasizing on modeling discrete choice modeling uh, for transport. Yeah. So the idea is that you have different probabilities of for all the modes and you have the probabilities of, of choosing for people. So what we try to extract is what is the probability of a person for a person to choose a mode. Yeah. So these probabilities are based on the utility that the person will get using that mode. So we will find the idea is that we find utilities for each mode and then the utility with the, the board that has the maximum utility will have the maximum probability 
for the person to choose that mode yeah that is the basic idea of of of, of having this risky choice modeling and uh, and to do this so what we will do like let's i'm going to give you more concept later but the basic idea let's start with this is we will start with uh, going back to r loading our uh, household and zonal data and doing the same thing. So because we, if you remember, we were doing, we were modeling and we zoomed just one demand group that was home-based work all. Like all means every, oh, no male, female the classification, no car, no car classification, nothing. But just home-based work trips for all persons. Yeah. So we will go back and we will again do the same things. So the first thing, loading all of the, the Excel sheets in R and then also selecting uh, a few um zone based uh table with uh, just creating another table with with a few options of the zone attributes which we want and then also extracting or filtering uh the work trips out of the all the trips table yeah so we do this and next we will go and prepare the data for maximum likelihood estimation and the idea for this is that first of all we will import the impedance matrix table that we just exported in Excel and that's a simple idea. So we do this impedance matrices read Excel and the, the path for the Excel file. Now the next thing would be to create the required uh, table so which we can use uh, you can say we can basically use for maximum likelihood and the idea is that we will start with the basic work tricks table that will have uh, the the filtered trips that have the origin from home to destination to work um, then we will basically so we, we are using the piping function we, we, which is basically uh, stacking multiple commands together to create this new table that is work trips mle maximum likelihood estimation data yeah and the first expression that we are doing is like we start with the work trips table and we left join the matrix impedance matrix table. So we basically left join the impedance matrices table and the left for to left to join basically we are using two constraints. The one is the first one is the zone region is equal to from zone number. So the from zone or the zone region is same and the zone destination is same. So if you understand the impedance matrices are basically uh, OD pair based, right? So zone one to one, zone one to two, and zone similarly, then one to three, zone one to four, right? And what is the the all the impedances for each OD pair? And the work trips table have random trips, right? So the first trip can be from five to eight, from five to two, and the next trip can be from four to three or four to twenty, whatever, right? So a specific OD pair. So what we basically do is like we left join for that specific OD pair. What are the impedances for that OD pair? So this work trips will have records for different OD pairs. And with this left join, given that the zone origin and origin destination, so we are basically trying to find for all the records, what are the impedance matrices? And to find them, we put the constraint that the origin and destination is the same. Yeah, I'm going to show you this in R as well. So first we left join all the impedances for all, all, for, for, for all the trips given what is the od pair we let join all the impedances and next we create the table uh, we, we 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 filter all or we remove all the other records and we only select uh, we create this table by selecting only these records so the first one the first column will be the zone origin next column is on destination and then all the rest columns that are from travels mode till cost put and so this will be called as the work trips MLE data. Yeah. And then we will simply rename the columns to remove blank spaces. I mean, the, so there they might be some, 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 uh, so the, the, this idea is actually that, I mean, this is not actually being used now because the name is already travel dash mode, but the idea is like very stupid. We are just renaming, renaming the column name because I had before the column name as travel space mode which might give us errors and we need to have the column names as travel underscore mode so no blank spaces this is just the idea actually i had this before but i i think i probably won't have this name with the space but probably will have the name with the underscore but okay so let's go to r and let's see how we are gonna do this so i have already have 
um, the R script written and I'm gonna share it with you of course and yeah so these are the previous packages that we already have we already had so we start with loading the packages and then next we'll, we'll, we'll start loading the the trip table data so you remember this this excel file right so we had which we had before and here are the the, the trip table from the survey all the trips yeah next is we are gonna create a new zone based uh, so we're gonna create a new zones uh, table is the same that we were doing before and the work strips so if you see again the work trips table it has only the trips which have purpose of origin home and destination work home to work all of them yeah and you see the origin is a random so 2 to 4 23 to 24 9 to 17 and you have a travel mode so people choose car to go from 2 to 4 and choose bike to go from 9 to 17 yeah so this side and um yeah so these are the two important attributes so the the home to work is our demand group uh, the important attribute is from to from origin and destination so the origin and destination and the mode this is the three things that we need from this trip table um, the next thing we will go and we will import the impedance metrics so wait i will i will also i also have one other point that i want to convey these paths are relative so i had a question from one of the students that he was not able to load the path so these paths are relative the idea of using a path here is that uh, you can simply use uh, if you want to load this excel file you can give um, the whole path of this this file and to give the whole path you can go here and you sorry just a moment uh, yeah you can go here and you can copy this whole path and plus this this is the file right to so give the path to this file you can simply copy this whole path put it as this and you can simply run this so okay sorry so one important thing you have to do is like you have to remove all of the slashes as the forward slash instead of the backslash so you have to change the slashes whenever you're giving the path which is uh, yeah which is a problem for or you have to do double slash something like this but yeah so if you use this whole path you can load or you can use a relative path that if your code is in the same directory this means that this dot means that you want to stay in the you are in the same directory and then after that forward slash and the name of the file sometimes what is happening is that when you're starting r you can actually have a problem that your working directory is different than to your where your 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 script is saved and you can check what is your current directory using this get the working directory and this shows you the working directory and if it's not the same you can use this set working directory and give this path as the working directory and set it here and once you do this you will be into working directory where you want or the other idea that i gave you the other option is you can use the complete paths instead i use the relative paths always because they are helpful Whenever you start the code, if I copy the whole folder to another place, I don't need to set the paths again because the paths are relative. This, this, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted, I, I changed the topic because this was some a question that I just remembered from a student. So let's get back to it, to, to our, our, our task. So what we wanted to do was basically we wanted to have, a, we, we extracted the, the Excel file, Excel sheets, the work trips, and now we extracted the impedance matrices that look like this. So the from zone to zone and all the impedances. And next, what we want to do is like we want to create a new table for the maximum likelihood estimation and to create this we are using this piping function on the work trips this is the work trips it has the zone origin zone destination yeah so two to four and what we are trying to do here is like we want to left join in this work trips all the impedance metrics given the zone origin is equal to form zone number and the zone destination is two zone number so if you see the impedance metrics you have from zone number to zone number and in the work trips you have zone origin zone destination so it will left join all the these values all of these tt bike till cost put it will left join these six fields in the work trips given that the that record has the same origin and destination right so now it will left join 
the record from the breast matrix that has 2 and 4 as the origin destination. I hope you understand this, right? So we have two conditions and we use these two conditions to left join the impedances for this trip. So the impedance is to travel from 2 to 4. Yeah. The next thing is that we have this whole table now. We will, this, will, this, this command will create a whole table of word trips plus the impedances. But we only need a fewer options. And we create a new table selecting only a fewer, fewer options. That are the zone region, destination, and the columns from mode travel mode to cost PUT. So once we run this, we will get this as the output, which is the first one is zone region, second one is zone destination. Now, if you see, these are the same records which we had from the work trip. So 223.9, 223.9. So these two columns, the origin and destination. And then next, we extract only the columns from travel mode till cost VUT. Now, if you see this, you are ending travel mode and trip expansion factor. And if you remember that the previous command will add all of these six fields on this work trips. And what we are doing is like we want to only select now from travel mode till those six. So eight more. So travel mode, trip expansion and the rest six. Yeah. So this is what will happen. And then you will, once you run this, you will get this as the output choosing zone region destination and the eight uh, columns that we say here from travel mode using a semicolon till cost PUT. And now we have the trip work, uh, work trips MLE data. The next thing is that, okay, this is, you, you don't need to use it. The idea is like just re re rename the, 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 this, if there is a column which names this, rename it to this, nothing else. Now we want to reshape this data using, uh, if we want to use the mlogit uh, package, to do the discrete choice modeling step and to find the the coefficients or the preferences for people uh, to to have different for 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 the at different attributes of the mode, yeah. Uh, and to do this, we need to prepare the data. And we we do this step. We do the estimation data, and we use this command that is from the mlogit package dot data. We give our uh, our table that we just created. And we have a few options that says that, okay, I, I'm, I'm not giving you more details because I'm uh, we are more focusing on the applied uh, modeling with Wizzoom. And I'm going to just give you briefly how you can prepare the data. And you don't need to play with these options anyway. We, we basically create the estimation data uh, given that we have a choice based on travel mode. And we have um, this as the, as the basic input. And if you see uh, the estimation data, it will look like this. Um, the idea is that it will create uh, the number of records uh, based on the number of travel modes. So for example, we had only one record. The first record was two to four choosing car. It will create three records for two to four for all the different modes that is by car and beauty. And it will choose true as for car and rest two as false. So it says that you have three, you, you will basically have three records for each trip. And out of these three, it will have true for one, which was being chosen. That is the simple idea how, how it's, it's converting the, um, the MLE data. But this is basically the format that will be required for, um, for using the MLogit package. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the idea how we can create it. I hope you understand. I'm just going to quickly repeat. We created the work trip MLE data table, uh, simply left joining from, uh, so we had the work trip table. We left joined all the impedance matrices, and then we selected only the attributes that we needed. That was the origin destination, the travel mode that people are choosing for this origin destination and all the impedances. And later, we rearrange that data for using the mlogit uh, package because we want, we want to use the mlogit to find to do the estimation. We use the mlogit dot data to rearrange the data, and then we give it to the mlogit function. Yeah. So the estimation data is nothing but just rearranging and creating these uh, three four, three records for each one of them. 
and the next step would be to basically um, running the edge model logic estimation and here it's the important part is basically how you want to do this and to understand this this is an important step so let's go back to our lecture i probably went forward more than i should have uh, in the r but the, in the lecture we were doing we were till here and the next step was actually showing you which i showed you in r as well this is the impedance matrix how it would look, look like this is the work trips mla data i showed you in the r anyway and next is that we want to do maximum likelihood estimation and here first of all we want we need to reshape the data to long format for M, M logic estimation. I, I showed you. You just need to use. Uh, we just we just need to use the package again and dot data to reformat the data in the version that M logic wants to use it. And then we use the M logic estimation. And here the important part is this M logic formula. So uh, what is the idea? So let's uh, let's see what the idea basic here would be um, to give. An M logic formula so that okay th this is the this is the basic idea that okay the first one represents the the alternative specific variable with a generic coefficient so here we put cost so travel mode is equal to cost one one right so the cost is will have one generic coefficient that will be available for all the modes so how people perceive cost for all the modes next will be a coefficient that will be individual specific variable so each mode will have its own um, own uh, coefficient or 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 or, or, or uh, yeah an uh, unknown coefficient yeah so we can simply put a simple formula so this formula means that we want to find the preference only for cost if you want to have travel time we can add cost travel time and then a one that means that we want a generic coefficient for cost a generic coefficient for travel time and then uh, individual specific variable yeah i i am not personally an expert or expert on discrete choice modeling but you will uh, you will if you want to get in more detail how this discrete choice modeling is performed as i told there is a very specific six credit course for discrete choice modeling yeah but the basic idea is that you need to specify uh the 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 memlogic formula for which you want to extract the preference or or the coefficients yeah so we press we set it like this we define the data as the estimation data and we define weights as trip expansion factors so the weights actually are okay to expand the actual trips right so this this is also important that each record is not actually in the network you might have different uh, number of trips for the same type of trip right so to expand our survey data to the whole population we have this trips expansion factor and we choose the weights as the trip expansion vector and when we run this we can if you want to see the summary of the results we can use summary mnl results to get the summary of the results yeah to show the summary and the summary would something look like uh, i'm going to show you next so first this looks like the estimation data i showed you already in r and the summary would look like this so once you run that um, mlogit formula uh, given the the formula as cost so we want only the coefficient for cost how people perceive cost plus we want uh, car and public transport intercepts yeah so <clears throat> to understand uh, the coefficients these are the estimation coefficients this is the coefficient for car this is the intercept if you remember the y intercept concept from the previous lectures this is the intercept for car this is the intercept for public transport and we don't have any intercept for bike yeah so how or why so this is also important to understand i'm sorry uh, there's a few things that uh, we have to uh, consider here so if you remember so we have um, the alternatives set as bike car and public transport and we put when we put only so in the formula when we are putting in my understanding when you're putting two ones here this means that we don't want a coefficient for bike we want a coefficient for the next two car and public transport and then we want a coefficient for car for cost so this means that we are finding the y intercepts for car and public transport relative to bike set as zero so relative to bike for we are we are fi finding the y, y intercepts relative to bike and the cost coefficient is the, the the preference for cost 
now yeah so so first we estimate the data we have the estimation data and then next we have uh, we have run the mlogic model and we got the summary results and these are the summary results yeah and now we we want to use the summary results to 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 do the mode choice in in visum and to do that we have to convert them into utility functions and this is how it looks like bike is equal to zero y intercept so for the bike it's zero that is uh, no y intercept plus the cost function 0 0.29 for car this is the y intercept plus cost for put y intercept plus cost now this gives you the basic utility for a person to choose either bike car and public transport okay. yeah so next is that uh, so we have already the skim matrix that is from zone to zone what is the cost to travel by car what is the cost to travel by bike what is the cost to travel by put and now what we'll do is like let's suppose you have 100 trips from one zone to the other and you have these utilities you basically have the idea that what are will be the actual utility for a person to um, use bike in that od pair or use car in that od pair or use public transport in that od pair yeah so uh, the maximum so the idea is would be that okay if if you have the maximum utility to use a car you will use a car if you have maximum utility to use a bike public transport you will use that so some understanding for the statistics so we 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 have to check the significance and the science to understand that our estimation was correct and significant or not so first of all you have to see what are the z values z values should be always greater than 1.96 or minus 1.96 so no, no, not in between uh, so that is one thing and the next thing so that they are statistically significant uh, the next thing is the sign of the cost coefficient so what are the signs so important thing the sign of the cost coefficient is positive now this actually doesn't make sense because cost is something that should be expected to contribute negatively to the extraction of the mode and here it's considered positive now why is it to try to understand this uh, in, in a true scenario when you're doing more choice i think these signs are very important to understand if you are if you are actually doing the estimation correctly or not and here in my understanding cost should be set as negative coefficient and it's positive because in we are actually not doing very well estimation here uh, because we don't have enough data right now we are using zero as the cost for bike and um, this actually is uh, and people are actually and and against to zero for the cost of bike we have some cost for car and some cost for put but people are still using not just bike but car and public transport as well right now this shows that uh, given that the cost actually is um, is zero people uh, like people are tend to choose car and public transport given that they should choose bike because bike doesn't have a cost but when people are choosing car, car and public transport this is this is actually putting the coefficient to positive saying that there, there there's a positive effect if the cost is higher or, or, or the, there is some cost people will tend to choose uh, the costlier thing instead of the cheaper thing because i mean the, if you, you understand that you right so there's no cost for bike there's some cost for car and some cost for public transport people are not just all are not choosing bike but they are choosing car and public transport as well so this means that people are perceiving cost as a positive thing instead of a negative thing and they are choosing options which have cost which of course is not a realistic thing but we are using we, we are we are using a simple example here in an actual scenario you should have a minus for cost but the value actually shows that how much people are sensitive to higher cost or lower cost. Similarly, you can have travel time here and the coefficient will also be minus for travel time. But the value of, uh, of that coefficient will show you how much people are affected with longer and shorter travel time. Similarly, for cheaper and expensive uh, trip cost. So that is the idea. Here, the coefficient is positive and it's wrong. And I told you the reason is that bike doesn't have a cost and it's a mode versus car and public transport and this is in my understanding i'm not the expert on risky just modeling but this is what i understand so yeah that's it that's how you can do basically the the mode choice using the maximum likelihood in r and now we have the utilities 
for for using a bike car and public transport given the trip data that we had and the impedances that we got from the network now the next idea would be just to go to wisdom and try to load this utility functions and create a procedure sequence for more choice and simply when we will create the procedure sequence we will put the utilities and we will run and we will get the audiometrics for car public transport and bike i hope you understand this if you have any questions we will have a live session next week and you can ask me all the questions that you have we will try to have a revision as well yeah so yes let's so going to the next step uh, more choice in wisdom uh, i'm first gonna show you the slides and then i'm gonna go to wisdom and gonna do these steps as well myself uh, so to do that to do this first of all what we'll do we'll go to procedure sequence again to create any procedure anyway so we'll go we'll create a new procedure and uh, we will under the demand model we will choose more choice and we'll press ok then we will under the reference object we'll double click and we have to choose the demand group we, wa we want to do the more choice now this refers to basically the the distribution matrix or so the demand matrix for tip distribution so if you choose if you have a number of uh, demand models you have to choose which demand group so if you have a number of demand groups you have to choose which demand group you want to do more choice so if you have home based work home based other non home based you have to choose non -home, home based others and then it will refer to the trip distribution uh, table or or the trip distribution matrix or the matrix for home based others yeah that's the idea for the reference object and then in the variant file we have to specify the utility functions that we just estimated in r and first of all what we'll do we'll double click on the variant file and here we have uh, three groups home based work all bike car and pod yeah and we have the modes already we have the demand stratum home based work all and these are the utility functions we need, which we need to specify and to do this we have to click on this this three dot button we click on this and we specify just like we specified the cost function we will specify the utility here uh similar to the formulas that we just extracted in r like this these so we'll put these formulas there and yeah that's how we can simply do it so we press this three but these these three dot button and you put the formula and to choose the matrix that is the cost matrix you have to press this and choose the relevant or the corresponding cost matrix for car public transport and bike i'm gonna show you again this in Visum as i told you before so yeah so that's a simply way simple way to put all the utility functions for all three modes and next we have uh, to yeah this is how it looks like uh, next is uh, we will choose the the type of function the, the we want for the for the mode choice and to do this this is the function type we say logit and these are the three values that sh the 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 uh, so wait what do you, what do you want to call it so the so this is these are different types of uh, mode choice models i don't have a lot of information but we are normally always choosing logit basic logit model or multi normal logit models right so we we always use logit so to choose the model you can simply press this button again and choose the logit model and because it has only one um, parameter given as c so we will we, it will have only this c that can be specified and a and b are are, are fixed are, are they are none they are zero yeah so uh, we can choose the logit model here and we simply press ok and these are the few attributes that we need to define so basically the utility function and the function type utility functions are the most important that we extracted from the from the maximum likelihood model in r and once we are finished we double click uh, we, we simply click on the active so that the more choice uh, procedure is active and we press the execute and this will simply run the more choice uh, procedure and this will output basically three different od matrices more choice home based work all bike car and public transport so each one of them is an od matrix of itself giving the number of trips by car for from each mode to all other modes number of tricks by bike number of tricks by put or public transport from each zone to all other zones yeah so the result is three different mode based body matrices so i'm just gonna do a hand hands-on for this thing for for this as well so my wisdom is run ran out so i'm just gonna save it quickly and then come back so this is where we were last time we um, 
created the impedances and then we extracted it using the OD pair table. And now we have the utility functions that we extracted from R. What we are gonna do next is that we are gonna create a procedure sequence to do the um, do the more choice in uh, estimation. Yeah, and yeah, this is uh, the procedure sequence window. We will simply create a new procedure sequence under, and then we this the procedure sequence for more choice is under demand model more choice. Press OK, and this is the new. <clears throat> Um, the new uh, position sequence. So reference object, if you remember again, is the demand group you want to do for position sequence. Yeah. So home base work all simple. And then in the variant file, we have to specify the utility functions for using each of the mode. And these are the utility functions and to specify here, I have to also see my my lecture. So let me just quickly see what are the. Um, mm -hmm. So this one, yeah. So I'm just gonna put it here and yeah. So we can simply specify clicking on the first one for bike. If you remember for bike, I'm just looking at it. So for you, you need, so you can check it later as well yourself. So this is the utility function that we had multiplied by the cost of bike, which is zero. I know, I know this, 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 this doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, yeah, this is uh, what we're showing here is the, just a simple basic example of uh, of doing a, 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 a more choice. Of course, we don't have enough information given what we are using here. We don't have all the information we should have, but I'm just showing you how uh, you can do a more choice in, 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 in Visum, yeah? So this is the next step and uh, yeah so we did for car for bike and next is for car and multiplied by cost of car and then the last one is 1.79 plus 0.29 into cost of public transport that's it yeah so we have the three utility functions as i told you if you want you can specify different uh, functions so we are choosing m logic you can select it from here or select it from the other way and you can simply press ok so we is gonna use uh, the logit model lo the logit function to do the mode choice and we can simply run this by selecting this um, active box and we see the execute okay so we are actually receiving an error that says that for mode car the utility function is invalid and the formula or operator expected matrix. So let's go and see what is the problem. So we can go and check the utility function for car. And yeah, you see, so I forgot to put a multiplication sign here. And now this formula is correct. And now it should be able to execute. Yeah, that's executes. So um, yeah, so once we execute, we can see the demand uh, matrices uh, under the uh, the 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 more choice matrices under this all matrices demand matrices, and these are three more choice matrices. So you can simply see car, bike, and public transport. We can select one by one or all, so you can see all the different matrices. So this is basically an OD matrix of uh bike trips from from all zones to all zones and then for car trips and then lastly for the public transport put trips yeah that's um that's it so that's a simple idea of how you can do uh, the more choice um in in visum using the the trip data the survey data and yeah that's uh, that's it from my side I'm um, yeah so let's quickly have a recap for today's lecture so the idea that we did was like we went for uh, we went for three different parts the first part was basically estimating the impedances in wisdom uh, for the network impedances for the for the three modes we improve we extracted the travel times and 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 the distances and then we had some cost functions which we used to create the cost matrices yeah and then what we like we exported these all uh, impedance matrices in excel and then we loaded into r to do the maximum likelihood in r and what we did was basically we we rearranged the data and uh, and we used the unlogit model 
given a m logit formula that i had a uh, some discussion with you and probably i hope you understood the idea um, we basically estimated the preference for people choosing a mode the preference for used cost as the mode attribute so for what we want the preference and we had the formula as cost and then the other two attributes were set as one yeah so we basically set the formula so that we can get the preference coefficient for cost and the intercepts for car and public transport and then we from that we get the utility functions for choosing each one of each of the modes and then we use the utility functions of of of, of all the modes and we input we had we add we just added these to the mode choice procedure sequence and then the procedure sequence to get um, the audio matrices for each mode i hope you understand the idea yeah uh, we will have now so just to give uh, you the idea for next week uh, although i told you last week that we will have um, a live session today but uh, we have rearranged the plan and we thought that it's a better idea that we also in, in, incorporate the mode choice and we have a live session with you next week so that all the questions that you have from trip destination distribution and mode choice can be addressed so next week i will have um, a hands-on on the homework that i gave last week to you guys i hope you are are, are, are in some progress with that so it would be a good idea that you can do that homework for trip distribution generation and distribution and then i'm going to just show you the solution for that homework and if you have any questions you can discuss that question i will try to do the whole homework in front of you if i have time and if i have not a lot of questions and then we will also have uh, a revision on more choice now this revision of course uh, we are we'll, we will see that first of all how what are the questions that you have and then we will also try to extend the homework including the most choice um, step yeah so yeah that's that's uh, that's is that's the idea and next what we can do is uh, um, we can simply um, yeah so we after this what we'll have is like we will have the fourth step of tip assignment that is a rather a smaller uh, step for now what we'll add so this will be covered by guido or uh, two weeks after and then we will have one more important lecture that will be for scenario creation to create different scenarios with network changes and trying to compare and trying to the, the application of, of of modeling we will have, we'll cover different applications how we can uh, do different applications uh, for, for for our model and we will also give you probably the project uh, we will uh, we will decide we will decide it within this week and in in the next live session i will have the discussion with you guys like when we will you when you will receive the project and yeah the and when and what will probably what will be the deadlines for you so see you guys next week in the live session um, have a nice week um, see you guys then have a good day bye